You've followed Tao throughout Bahari Bay, taken Sifu's torch through layers of mazes, and solved enough puzzles with your bow and arrow that even Hassan is impressed. Now let's take a look at the four new bundles in the Vault of Flames, and I'll walk you through exactly how to collect these items fast. Grab your fishing rod and let's start with the Flame Rod Bundle. The Radiant Sunfish can be found in Kilima Rivers using regular worms and can be fished up at any time of day or night. This one took me about 60 worms before I fished it up. Now here's a little tip. If you're running low on worms or glow worms and hunting for a specific rare fish, you can actually cancel the fishing animation as soon as you see that it's not the desired fish. And if you cancel at the right time, your worm won't be lost to the water and you can keep trying with that same worm over and over again until you find what you're looking for. I personally don't use this trick because I like to level up my fishing and use the other fish I catch for cooking. Um, but this trick is an option for those that are trying to conserve their worms. The flame tongue ray can also be found in Kilima rivers, but only during the morning and daytime with glowworms. Morning starts at 3 a.m. paleon time, so get out there early and start casting. The striped sturgeon is found in Kilima lake using worms, but only during the evening at night. To be honest, this fish is more common than the others, and I happen to already have one in storage when I was filling my bundles. Finally, head over to Bahari Bay in the morning to fish for the Dawn Ray without bait in Bahari Rivers. This was the fish that I thought would be the hardest to find because you can only find it during morning hours, but I caught this one within 10 casts. While you're in Bahari Bay, let's grab some of the bugs we'll need for the Bright Bug Bundle. The Paper Lantern and the Bahari Glowbug are found all over Bahari Bay, but only during the nighttime hours of 6 p.m. to 3 a.m. The blue Paper Lantern bugs are quite common, but keep an eye out for the rare green Bahari Glowbug. You'll have a better chance of catching both bugs in one night if you stick to the southern half of the Bahari Bay map. The Spitfire Cicada takes a little more work to find. We'll have to chop some sapwood trees in Bahari Bay between the hours of 3 a.m. and 6 p.m. for this little guy to pop up. And now technically you don't have to chop the trees to catch the bug, but I found it's way easier to find them if you pop them from the tree and maybe you'll force some flow wood to spawn while you're at it. Now let's head back to Kilima near the Mirror Pond ruins to hunt for the fire-breathing dragonfly. This bug can technically be found at any time of day, but my pro tip would be to start your bug hunt at about 5 a.m. When morning ends at 6, all of the bug spawn points will reset and you'll actually have an easier time finding those rare bugs. This next bundle is actually not able to be fully completed at the time of this recording. The devs have stated that the recipe for stuffed tomatoes is not currently in the game and will be added in an upcoming patch. But until then, here's how to complete the rest of the Seer Chef bundle. Chapa Masala is a recipe that can be purchased from Ref after you've completed cooking level eight. The heat root is found on cliff sides in Bahari Bay. Dari Clove is a rare forage that spawns in the same spawn points as mushrooms and sweet leaf do in Bahari Bay. So when you're out foraging, make sure to grab everything that spawns in an effort to give Dari Clove more chances to pop up. Or if you've reached at least level 10 foraging, both of these forageables can be purchased directly from Ashura using foraging guild medallions. And speaking of medallions, the Vault of Flames introduces the Ember Seeking Medallions as the final bundle to complete. Gina will give you the first one when you officially unlock the vault and speak to her, but the other five are well hidden in chests throughout Bahari Bay. Here's where to find all of the Ember Seeker Medallions. The second one can be found near the waterfall by Tamala's house. Follow this stream west and you'll find a chest hidden in a little nook near the rushing falls. Head east from the statue garden, and on the beach there will be a capsized boat with a chest hidden inside. At the south side of Lighthouse Lagoon, there's a chest hidden inside one of the pillars. This one was so hard for me to see because of the foliage, so keep an eye out. Head south to the stable at Beachcomber Cove, and turn around, 
you'll find a chest hidden at the base of that ruined arch. Finally, and this one's a doozy, head over to this abandoned mine shaft where you'll drop down and find a hidden passageway behind some vines. Drop down even further and find a chest in the secret chamber. Phew, congratulations on completing all of the possible bundles in the Vault of Flames. Now, as I mentioned before, the Seer Chef bundle is currently unable to fully complete. However, if you complete the other three of these four bundles, you will still get the Kitsu Monument. So get out there and start filling these in. I hope this guide was helpful. Let me know what other Paleo videos you'd like to see from me in the future, or if there are any tips I might have missed in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.